Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another coin unboxing. This is actually the uh, same company I, or dealer that I bought with uh, a month or two ago. I bought a $50 bargain box. Uh, this one is actually the $100 bargain box. Actually $105 after shipping. Uh, the last bargain box I opened up. Uh, it's actually a pretty good return on my investment. Had some good deals in there. Uh, quite a bit of silver, so I decided to spend a little bit more money and see if the uh, $100 uh, bargain box will be just as good. Let's see, looks like they have quite a bit of coins in there. They still have these same plastic holders. I'll just put this to the side and just take them one by one. All right, first one got here. I'm going to take them out of these two by twos, these uh, plastic holders, just so we can see them a little bit better. Just a bit of advice, uh, these plastic holders like this, these are really good for shipping coins, but they're not good for long-term storage. They contain a substance called PVC, and if you leave your coins in there uh, long enough, they could potentially damage your coins, so uh, it's a good idea to take those out. All right, so the first coin we have is we're going to have a Buffalo Nickel, 1936. We've got a little bit of a ding right there on the forehead. And this is no mint marks of Philadelphia. So start off with a buffalo nickel. Next one looks like oh looks like we got a large scent. Uh, it's kind of shiny, so I would say this one has been cleaned. Yeah, I would I would definitely say this one's been polished up a little bit, cleaned. Uh, it's going to be an 1854. Yep, definitely cleaned. Look at that. If you flip it over and it's pointed that way, so it's not like a, the uh, nickel where if you flip it over, it's upside down. This is actually turned to the side like a quarter turn, so that's kind of interesting. I've never noticed that before on uh, some of those older coins, but they did that sometimes. Oh, let's say we have a little bit of silver. Looks like we're going to have a Kennedy half dollar. This is going to be, I believe it's going to be 1967 is what I saw. That means this one is going to be 40% silver. A little bit of spotting on there, but not bad condition. But nice to get some silver. Okay. I probably should have got a staple remover to help me get some of this stuff out. These staples can be in there. can be kind of aggravating to remove. Alright. Next we have a Lincoln scent. And this is going to be 1909. Looks like it. Yep, 1909. And this is going to be... I'm trying to see. I think it... My eyes aren't as good, but I think that is a VDB in, VDB in there. I know that. Yeah, you can just barely see it. So 1909 VDB. So far, so good. Looks like we're going to have another Buffalo Nickel coming up. Alright. This is going to be a 1937. This is going to be no mint mark again, so this is another Philadelphia. All right, let me just put this over here to the side right here. Still got quite a few to go. So I'm like going to have maybe a presidential dollar. And this is going to be, it looks to be a proof coming up. And this is going to be Millard Fillmore proof presidential dollar. All right, they, they have the lettering over here on the side, so one second. I got the E Pluribus Unum. And it looks like there's an S, so San Francisco, 2010. So it's interesting the date and the mint mark are here on the edge as opposed to the obverse, like they are nowadays, like most other coins. All right. That's probably worth a couple of dollars. So we're going to have another cent. So that looks to be like it's going to be in pretty good shape. 
Yeah, this looks like, oh, I guess maybe a proof, 1954. Looks like a 54 proof. Lincoln sent 54 proof, okay. A couple of proof coins in a row. One more recent, one kind of old. Looks like we got a Standing Liberty quarter coming up. Hopefully it's got a readable date on it. Some of the early ones, they rubbed off very easily. Yep, this one is 1926. Doesn't look like it has a mint mark, so it'd be Philadelphia. But overall, really nice shape. Standing Liberty quarter. Nice to get some more silver. Second silver coin we've got so far. And let's see. So I'm going to have a Jefferson nickel this time coming up. And 1950. Okay. And this is the 50D maybe? Yes, it is. So that is uh, a key date. 1950D. Uh, one of the lower mintage dates. Unfortunately, it's got a little bit of scratches there on the back of the cheek. I don't know if you can see it right there in the light, unfortunately. But overall, still, uh, even with that, a mint state coin. 1950D, key date, Jefferson nickel. So, yeah. But, oh, the larger coin this time. Luckily, no staples. <laughs> and this is, oh, it might be silver. Uh, 1972. Actually, I don't think it's silver. It's almost like, I think they chromed this coin. It's a chrome-covered Eisenhower dollar. 1972, almost can't even see the mint mark. I think it's a, I can't even tell it's a DRS because of the chrome on it. That's kind of odd. I have no idea what something like that could be worth because of the chrome on it. I'll have to, huh, that is odd. That is definitely an odd, let me start the stack over here. That's an odd coin. I have never come across a chrome-covered Eisenhower dollar before. Okay, looks like we're gonna have some more silver. Looks like we're gonna have a mercury dime this time. And we do. It's got some nice toning to it, actually. Look at that toning around the edges. I like that. I like toned coins. Didn't have a mint mark, but it's a 1943. So right there in the middle of World War II. Looks to be overall mint state toned mercury dime. 1943. Nice looking coin. I'll definitely take that. Still got quite a few more to go. Looks like we're going to have our first foreign coin. They usually, this dealer usually throws some foreign coins in there. I guess some filler in there had something a little bit different. Generally, they don't have a lot of value uh, unless they have uh, made of silver or some other precious metal. But this is, I have no idea. Somewhere in Asia, I think. Uh, Republic uh, Lebanese, so maybe Lebanon, I guess. 1961, so I'm going to say it's a foreign Lebanese coin. That's the best guess that I have that, of what it is. Okay, got another one. Looks like another foreign here. This looks like a much older one. Okay. Okay, let me see. Trying to see. It's very well worn. I can't even see a date on it. I have no idea. Centimos something. Centimos. I may have to research that one. Maybe it could be Spanish possibly. It's so worn I cannot tell a date on it. But, uh, interesting coin nonetheless. Okay, and looks like I want to have another one. Another uh, foreign coin, that is. And this is, I can tell by the weight, it's almost weightless. This is aluminum. I never care too much for aluminum since. I don't know why. This is Spanish. This is Espana, 1959, aluminum. 10 centimos. So I guess this could be Spanish too since it says centimos on the back. So I'm assuming this is Spanish, just a very old Spanish coin, and this is uh, another Spanish aluminum. And okay, we're back to the USA. So I'm going to have another Kennedy half dollar. And this is going to be a proof. 
not the greatest proof condition, 1980S proof Kennedy half dollar. Second Kennedy. I'd rather get the silver ones personally. Oh, this is a... I can't even tell what this is. I don't even know why I threw this one in here. This is terrible shape. Terrible, terrible shape. Oh, it's, it's another aluminum, but it's almost like a slug. I can't tell anything about this coin. I can, I can see the Espana right there. So it's another Spanish coin, but it's aluminum, and it is basically worthless. <laughs> it's just an alum, piece of aluminum as far as I'm concerned. Okay, looks like another foreign one. At least I can tell some detail on this one. Okay, this is British. Okay, the half penny from Britain. Got King George on there. 1940 half penny from Great Britain. Okay, let's go and have another foreign one right here. Okay, this is China, maybe, I'm guessing. Maybe a Chinese coin. Other than that, I, they look like Chinese characters. Somewhere in the Orient. That's about all I can tell. I, I can't read Oriental writing, so. And another foreign. And we have Sierra Leone. One cent, 1964. Almost like somebody had a thumbprint on it. It's got some uh, staining on there, unfortunately. And another foreign. Quite a bit of foreigns in this one. Feels like another aluminum. And another one from the Far East, China maybe. Get some more silver. We haven't had silver in a while. Uh, another foreign. It's going to be a one penny, it says. This is an odd one. I have never seen one like this before. Looks like it could be copper, though. Okay, we have, it says Nevada chapter number 6, R-A-M, Nevada City, California, 1854, one penny. Chartered April 30th, 1854. So this is just a, like a token honoring a somewhere in Nevada. Never seen one of those before. Interesting. Come on, how about some more silver? Okay, here we go. This is more like it. Considering I paid $100 for this thing. <laughs> this is what I expect to see more of right here. Barber half dollar. That's more like it. 1907D, so 1907 Denver, Barber half dollar. Much, much better. Need more coins like that. Coming to the close here, I probably have another half a dozen coins left. So, I'm going to have another four in though. And it's going to be just a, a one cent from Canada, 1972. Another cent. And this is going to be the steel cents that they made in 1943 during World War II. Yeah, 1943 steel cent. This is going to be an interesting one. I'm going to have to take it out. This is, uh, I believe this is Russian wire money. These were made, it is silver. These were made a long time ago in Russia. A few hundred years ago at least. I'd have to research it a little bit, but I'm pretty sure this is wire money. They just have a wire and they just kind of stamp the, uh, a piece of silver wire to make the coin and then, then kind of clipped it off.
but I'm, almost, I'm certain that's what it is. Russian wire money. But it is silver. Not very much silver, but it is silver. Definitely an interesting coin. Okay, getting on down. Just a few left. And I'm going to have another Indian head scent. And this is going to be 1901. A little damage there. Some nicks on the front of it. But 1901 Indian head scent. Okay. I'm going to have some more silver, finally. I'm going to have another barber. This time it's going to be a barber dime. And it is going to be 1914 D, Denver. 1914 D, Barber Dime. Okay, only two left. Another Lincoln scent. Nope, not Lincoln scent. It's going to be another Indian head scent. My bad. My bad. Okay, and this is going to be 1903. And this is actually really great shape. I don't know if you can see the detail. I can see the Liberty up there. I mean, this is probably extra fine right there. There's some good value in this coin. There's some really good value in this one. This is really nice. I might have to check this against my album. That may be one I need to replace in my album. It's such great, great shape. I would say at least extra fine condition for that one. That's a really good one. And I'll say the best for last. We've got some more silver. And it's going to be a... Peace dollar. Silver dollar, 1923 S. Silver dollar. So, save the best for last. Almost an ounce of silver. So, uh, that's going to be quite a bit of the value of the whole box, just in this one coin. So, all in all, that's that's everything. That's all the coins. Uh, let's see. Twenty-seven coins. Try to count them real fast. <laughs> Overall, still quite a bit. Uh, there's some old ones in here, like the like the large scent. Uh, definitely the wire scent, or the wire money from Russia. Very interesting. So I'm just going to take a break here, like I did in my last video from this uh, last time I did a bargain box. I just want to look up some of the coin values and uh, see how well I did. Like I said before, I paid $105 for all these coins after shipping. So let's see how I did and see if uh, I actually made my money back on this one. All right, I'm back. Got through looking at some prices. Just want to kind of go through, start off with some of the lower end stuff. Start off with this ugly little coin. I can't tell anything about this. Normally, you know, foreign coins have some kind of value, but this is just basically aluminum. An aluminum slug. It's basically worthless. Zero. <laughs> just looking at some of the other foreign coins we had. Uh, good variety, but once again, not a whole lot of value. I would say an average of 20 cents a piece for a total of a dollar and 60 cents for those various foreign coins. Next, this Eisenhower dollar. Uh, generally, there's good collector value with these. Generally, these go for more than face value, but the fact that somebody put chrome on this thing, I would say that it's no more than face value. I would say one dollar for that. Uh, just looking at some of these others. This was actually a surprise, okay? The only thing I could think to do with this one is go to eBay and see if I could find a sold listing for this coin, something. I did find uh, a current listing for this coin. And assuming this is not a, a restrike or remake and this is authentic, uh, based on the way that auction's going right now, it's, it's at $25. So, uh, I'm just going to make the assumption that it's worth at least $25. Now, that's a big assumption. Uh, I'm assuming this is authentic. It's not a restrike or a remake of that coin uh, when I make that. So, if it's authentic, then that's a $25 coin. Uh, the large scent, unfortunately, it's cleaned. Now, if this coin had been not cleaned, still had its uh, patina that he had gotten over the years, you know, it's a $75 coin all day long, probably. $50 to $75, I would say. But given the fact it's cleaned, I would say uh, at most that's a $25 coin. Now, looking at the Lincoln head sense, uh, not the Lincoln, but the Indian head sense, excuse me. The 1901, it's got a little bit of damage. Uh, I'd say a dollar for that one. And then uh, this nice one, uh, this one that's really good condition is 1903, given the fact that 
you can still see the Liberty on the headdress a lot of detail uh, that's a $12 coin all day long so really good value with that one going to some of these other ones the 1909 VDB I was actually surprised I knew this those, those had some good value uh, especially the 1909 S but this is just the regular 1909 no S Philadelphia uh, but still it was $9 uh, 1943 uh, not a whole lot of value uh, 20 cents now there was more value than this one. This proof one, now this is according to Coins Magazine. So I'm just going off the price guide and I was surprised to see that they're listing this retail value of the 1954 proof is uh, $19. Now the Buffalo Nickels, we just had a 36 and 37. So pretty common dates, high mintage. Uh, they're a dollar a piece. Now this one, as mentioned before, the 1950D, this is a key date, very low mintage, and the fact that uh, it is a, a mint state coin. So in its condition, as it sits right now, uh, it's a $25 coin. Good value with that one. Uh, going to the Barber Dime, pretty common date, it's just a 1914, but decent shape. Some of these can get very well worn, and this still has a, a fair amount of detail. It's solid, good condition. Uh, this is $4.50 coin. Now the Mercury Dime, it's a much better condition. It's, it's nearly uncirculated. Great toning, beautiful coin. Uh, that's a $5, $5.50 cent coin. Uh, the SLQ, once again, for an SLQ, it's in really good shape. It's a solid good, maybe borderline very good, but I would say definitely very, uh, a good condition coin. Uh, still see some good details with the stars on the side, there's in, in, in on the inside. The dates usually get worn, especially uh, earlier on in the mintage. They were actually raised, and they got worn down very easily before they made them uh, more incised so it wouldn't rub out. But still, uh, that's $11 coin all day long. Uh, looking at some of these others, some more higher value coins. The Barber Half, a lot of silver in there. Uh, great shape, 1907D, that's $17.50. This Kennedy, the 67, uh, not uh, beca because of the condition, it doesn't have a lot of collector value. You're basically just looking at the melt value of the, of the silver. So that's at most a $6 coin. And with the proof, that's uh, collector value is probably $5. The Fillmore, night 2010 Miller Fillmore proof, uh, at most that's going to be 3 or $4. I'd say $4. I'll be generous and say four dollars. And the one coin that's worth the most is going to be the peace dollar. 1923 S peace dollar, solid good condition, and that's a thirty dollar coin. So we had some that were just pretty well cheap, just filler stuff like these foreign coins. Uh, but overall, and I almost missed one. I almost forgot the wire money, the Russian wire money. I almost left that off my list. So small, it's easy to forget about. Uh, but it is silver. It is old. Uh, these are late 16th century coins, so late 1600s. Uh, but overall value, uh, it's going to be a $5 coin. So anyway, didn't want to leave that one out. Almost did. Let me just put it there in between these two big ones. But overall, uh, not a bad one at all. This uh, dealer generally gives very good deals when they come to their wholesale lots, the bargain boxes. Uh, it's going to be a little over $200 retail for all these coins, and I paid $105 after shipping. So I will take that deal all day long. I'll continue to buy from this dealer. Next time I may buy a higher dollar, bar, a higher dollar bargain box. I know their bargain boxes go up to $500, even $1,000. So uh, not the easiest transaction because that's not, uh, not a small amount of money, but I'll probably purchase one of those in the future and probably do a video on them as well. But anyway, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.